How's it going, everyone? Thanks so much for uh, joining us on your lunch break. Hope you all had a really nice holiday weekend. Um, today, we are going to be talking about outdoor performance foods. Uh, my name is Chef Marie Hines. I'm based out of the uh, Seattle area, and I have recently written a book called Peak Nutrition uh, for the sports uh, uh, mountain sport athlete. So it's a, a sports nutrition cookbook and my co-author, uh, Mercedes Paul Meyer, she, um, helped write this book last year and, um, it just came out in May and you can pick it up at REI, um, if you want. And there's a uh, hundred different recipes in here for you to enjoy that are based around just health, wellness, moving your body outdoors, whether you're, you know, front country uh, cooking or your back country cooking or, you know, you're cooking stuff to have ready for you to go on the trail while you're, while you're doing your activity to, to pack up and take with you. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Um, and then also while we're waiting for folks to join, I'll also let you know that I, I just recently started a partnership with REI doing a um, cooking show on their YouTube channel. And that cooking show is called Cookout with Chef Marie Hines. And um, we're doing a lot of fun stuff on there. A lot of really fun content, uh, you know, different um, types of cooking techniques to use in a front country setting, a back country setting, and, and really kind of talking about a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about today. Um, with the element of uh, adventure um, on that show. All right, so let's see. Kind of waiting for a couple more people to to come in and, and join us. Um, let's see. While we're waiting for people to join, I'll, I'll just go over a little bit about what we're going to be discussing today. So food as medicine. Um, outdoor performance foods, uh, it can be for... Someone who, if you're just a family going for a day hike, or if you're, you know, a recreational athlete who really takes your your movement practice seriously, and you know you're you're really into an outdoor sport, and you're just kind of looking to see what you can do to take it to the next level, as well as professional athletes, um, you know, the everything is going to apply to any of those categories or even if you know if you have a really intense work week and you're just figuring trying to figure out a way to like build up your energy level um and you know maintain pace and have a high cognitive function getting really good sleep keeping your immune system up all of that we're, we all are in need of you know of all of those things um so we're gonna go ahead and get started here and the first thing that i want to kind of cover is um what are these performance foods. Um, you know, wh what is it exactly when I say performance foods? So when I talk about performance foods, I am just talking about things that is going to increase your mental and your, your, your mental and your physical energy levels. How can we be boost those up and keep those sustained? Um, and a lot of those performance enhancing examples that we're looking for are things like having a deeper, more restful sleep. What foods can we eat? What nutrition can we have to help facilitate that? Um, increasing your uh, cognitive function and your focus. What are different foods that we can eat in order to help maintain that higher level of focus? Um, and increasing our energy endurance. So if you're an endurance athlete, if you're doing a you know, uh, ultra run in the mountains, or even if you're just going to go backpacking and you're putting in, you know, 15, 18 mile days, or if you are a rock climber and you're climbing as many vertical feet as you possibly can in a day, all these sorts of things requires a lot of sustained energy for a long period of time. And what can you do to have that sustained energy all day long where you're not bonking uh very often you know we'll as athletes we'll we'll call it bonking and uh bonking is what ends up happening when you know maybe you're out there for three hours maybe you're out there for 10 hours and then all of a sudden you just hit this wall and you you crash and it's really hard to recover from that so how do we keep that 
uh, crashing from not happening and just keep that, that nice, slow, sustained energy that just keeps with you the entire time that you're moving your body. Um, the fourth thing that we're going to talk about is building muscle mass and um, getting that desired body composition. Um, that getting that building that kind of strength is is super important. And then, how do we recover? What are we doing to recover? What are we doing to boost our immune system? Um, you know, what are ways in which that we can decrease the inflammation in our system, the unnecessary inflammation in our system? Um, so that way our joints feel like they're moving more fluidly and uh, we're just getting a lot more recovery time in and that's when all of the muscle growth is going to be happening. Whenever we're resting and restoring, that's when we are actually gaining our strength. So putting a lot of focus on our restorative practice as well as our workout is equally as important. Um, and then the sixth thing that I want to cover today is talking about keeping the body and the mind hydrated and different ways in which that we can keep um, hydrated. Um, that's really important for brain function. It's really important for your energy level. Uh, it's really important just to kind of, you know, keep your organs moving properly and just having overall flow. Um, so let's see here. Okay. The... The, and, and I do want to say that with everything that we're going to cover today, my goal is for you to walk away with these tools, free tools that you can use for the rest of your life to help improve your health, increase your vitality, increase your energy level, and, and live a longer life. So whether you're an athlete or you're not an athlete, these are all things that we crave and that, that we want to have happen, right? Um, you know, we don't want to wake up feeling fatigued and having brain fog, and we want to have the energy that we need to run around and play with our kids after work. We want to make sure that after work, you know, if we can go out rock climbing, that we have the energy to be able to do that. So a lot of the tactics um, in order to maintain this healthy function is really all in our control with what it is that we're eating and having some thoughtfulness and some mindfulness and just a little bit of education on what these foods are and how they're going to interact with our body to make sure that it's giving back and not taking away. We want to work on anything that we put in our body that it's nutritionally dense and that our body is not going to have to work extra hard to process whatever it is that we ate because if it takes a long time to process foods that we ate because if it's it, with it not being the right foods then that's just more body or more time that it's going to take for your body to um, recover from that before it can actually utilize um, the nutrients that you just gave it okay so the first one that we're going to go over is getting deeper sleep. What foods can we eat in order to have better sleep? Um, tryptophan is something that is super helpful. It is a essential amino acid, uh, meaning that your body does not make it on its own. It's something that we do have to get through nutrition, anything that, that we bring in or, or, or supplements. So uh, tryptophan is very important because it aids in uh, the production of serotonin. It helps stabilize our mood. It helps um, create uh, melatonin, which is something that helps with our sleep. So some foods that contain um, a good amount of uh, tryptophan um, are things like milk, canned tuna, oats, chicken, turkey, cheese, nuts, uh, seeds and fruits. So these are all things that would be really good to have um, before you went to sleep. Um, ideally, I would say probably an hour or two before you go to bed, you want to make sure that your body has had time to do a lot of digestion before we lay down and we sleep for the night. So that way, while your body is sleeping, it actually has time to recover and restore. And it's not just churning away, churning away, churning away, you know, at your digestive system as it's trying to like process all of this, this new intake of food. So an hour and two before bed, just a little bit, um, you know, you have a, a few hundred calories of something that's going to help you sleep and, and feel really restful. Um, 
Other ideas since we're talking about sleep hygiene to, to help with your sleep is uh, if you can turn your screens off a couple of hours before you go to bed so you're not getting that blue light. Kindles are okay. Um, they're, they're actually meant to, to not have the, the blue light or if you're reading off your you know iPad or, or some other device, just make sure it's in the, the nighttime setting so that way you're not getting that blue light, which is going to um, make your brain stay really active because what we're trying to do is just like really calm the system down. We're really trying to get our body into a, uh, into, you know, parasympathetic mode, which is your rest and digest mode. And we want to get it out of the sympathetic um, mode, which is the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight and kind of keeps us up and active with, you know, all of the energy. So really just trying to think of those ways to calm your system at night and get really good sleep through nutrition, through maybe a nice hot bath, maybe some restorative yoga, um, you know, kind of going through your, your day and, you know, run through, take five minutes and think about your day and how it went, do some processing. So that way it's not keeping you up at night and keeping, keeping the wheels turning, but kind of go through the, the highlights of your day and what were the best parts of your day? What were things in your day that maybe you could have done better and do that little, um, self download before you, you put yourself to sleep. So that way you can have nice restful sleep and you're not ruminating about all those things. Um, other things that you can eat to help deepen your sleep is uh, a little bit of healthy carbs at the end of the day can be really helpful as well. Like if you have a little bowl of, you know, buttered quinoa or um, some other healthy complex carb would be a really great thing to have. Maybe a little bit of sweet potato, um, you know, or, or some other, you know, root vegetable would be a really good way to go. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is increasing focus and cognitive function. What are foods that can help bring that level of awareness up? Uh, some of those things are lion's mane mushroom, um, reishi mushroom. These, uh, these adaptogenic mushrooms are really, really good for a system. They are really good to stimulate uh, the growth of of brain cells, which is really just going to increase our memory. It's going to increase our, you know, energy level. It's going to increase our level to be able to focus. Another type of food that is really helpful um, to increase that cognitive function is uh, foods that have flavanols in there. Uh, flavanols are known to increase memory, reaction time, increase blood flow, and increase oxygen levels. So having those flavanol foods is something that would be really beneficial to your system. And fortunately for us, one of those foods that are really high in flavanols is dark chocolate. Um, and we all love dark chocolate, so it gives us a good excuse to have, it, have a little bit um, and that, that'll really kind of help boost up your, your cognitive function, as well as red grapes and apples, broccoli, broccoli sprouts, uh, cherry tomatoes and beans. Um, this is kind of a short list. This isn't all of the foods that I'm mentioning. This isn't all of the foods that are beneficial. The, the list is very long. I'm just pointing out some examples of foods that are, that are high in each of these categories to start folding into your diet, keep it in the fridge, keep it up, you know, keep these foods in your pantry, um, and you'll be off to a really good start. Um, so MCT oils is, uh, another thing that that's derived from coconut. That's also known for cognitive function. Caffeine, a little bit of coffee can also help with that. Uh, make sure that you, if you're sensitive to caffeine, that you're careful about when you stop drinking coffee so it doesn't in disrupt your sleep. But having a little bit of caffeine, whether it's coffee or whether it's black tea or, you know, uh, yerba mate, any of those things can also help um, accelerate the, the cognitive function. But you just want to really be careful that it doesn't disrupt your sleep. And then omega-3s, omega-3s are also really, really great for our brain. Um, our brain is mainly made up of fat, um, so it really likes the fat. It, it really likes fat. It works really well with flat, uh, fat. So having 
omega-3s, you know, um, some fatty fish. There's a lot of uh, omega-3s in fatty fish, so that's super helpful. Um, and the omega-3s will also bring down the inflammation in our body, and it'll bring the inflammation down in our brain as well. And they're recently finding out that if you have inflammation in the brain, very often that's where um, you can develop the, you know, depression and anxiety and, and PTSD and a, a lot of these, you know, um, um, mental uh, issues that, you know, are, are coming up a lot of times can be controlled around our diet. And so keeping the inflammation down in the brain will assist with that. So uh, the third thing that we're going to go over is increasing energy endurance. Um, and if you want to increase your energy endurance so you can sustain it all day long. So if you're out moving your body in the mountains, you really understand how important it is to um, be at a, at a high functioning energetic rate where you're, you know, you have the physical capability to be safe out there. Because very often when you are out in, in the mountains and you're in those environments, you know, in, in order to be safe, having that physical strength to get yourself in and out of a situation is very important. If you see weather coming in and uh, there's thunderstorms ahead and if you're on the top of the peak, it's time to get moving, it's time to get down, you wanna have the energy to be able to do that. And you also wanna make sure that if you're doing a, a multiple sport day, let's say you're, you're backpacking for you know, three nights or, or five nights, or you know, you're going on a climbing trip and, and you plan on climbing really hard multiple days in a row, or, or you know, you're, you're gonna do you know, uh, a really big link up where it's gonna have you moving for multiple days or, or multiple hours. What can you do to keep pace? Because it's so much more fun to get into these environments and challenge yourself um, and have energy left at the end of the day. Um, I know I have definitely been on those hikes where my fitness level is not where it should be. Maybe, you know, my, my nutrition intake isn't where it should be. And I'm out, you know, trying to go run the enchantments, which is a, which is an 18 mile, uh, 18 mile, you know, trail. And I have bonked halfway through that because I've had too much sugar, you know, too much caffeine and just all of the wrong things to fuel my body. And then a big crash. And then, you know, the duration of that run, uh, it, it's awful. You're just slogging it out at that point and you're just pushing yourself, pushing yourself. And you realize that you're just depleting your body and depleting your body because you didn't set yourself up for success. It's, it's, it's always, always so much more rewarding to finish a long endurance event and still having like a little bit of gas left in the tank, knowing that, um, okay, I have enough energy, I'm at camp now, or now, you know, now it's time to get in the car for that long drive home or whatever it is that you need to do. You don't have the energy to be able to do that. You know, hang out, make a really nice dinner, make your camp up, and through that entire process, just having the energy throughout the day instead of feeling like you've, you know, you've been beat up all day. And then that'll allow you the energy the next day to go out again. So the more energy you have, uh, very often the, the more that you get to do or the, the bigger events that you can, you can take on. Um, so some of these uh, different types of foods to help with this are complex carbs, um, healthy fats and uh, proteins. So um, these foods take longer to digest and that's great. You want it to take longer to digest. If it takes longer to digest, that means it's giving you a nice slow rate of uh, energy to your system. Instead of quick sugar foods, if you have quick sugar foods, what ends up happening is you know, your, your blood sugar spikes, your insulin goes up and then you'll crash right after that and it's um it's no fun if you're only halfway through your event and, and you're already starting to crash so some of these foods um that you can enjoy in this area would be you know complex carbs sweet potatoes carrots uh potatoes with the skin on um any of these sorts of uh, healthy carbs oats oats are really good as well especially if they're if they're soaked and they're not cooked um, your, the bioavailability of them will be 
um, increased uh, substantially if you if you just soak them and, and you don't cook them. Um, lean proteins is another thing that's really good. So any sort of uh, lean meat or fish, you know, canned salmon, canned oysters, um, you know, turkey, chicken, um, cheeses, cottage cheese, you know, yogurts, any of those lean sorts of proteins are really good for you. Um, as well as nuts. Um, also peas, legumes are really great for you. And for healthy fats, avocados are really good. Um, nuts that are, that are high in fats, macadamia nuts are really good. The, the, the great thing about um, some of these, these higher fat foods that will give you nice, slow burning energy is that they're also, they tend to be very calorie dense. So they're nutritionally dense, and they're calorie dense. And when we're out moving our body for a long period of time, having foods that are calorie dense so we can keep our, our calorie intake up with the least amount of work to have to chew and digest and you know sit down and cook and all of that is, is really important. So very often for me, what this would look like in this, this category to um, have endurance is if I'm going to go, you know, rock climbing in Washington Pass in the North Cascades and I want to go climb a couple of peaks in there or get a lot of vertical mileage in, you know, I would start out in the morning having probably a, you know, a protein smoothie, something that's really easy to digest at the house because I'm I'm gonna be up really early, I'm gonna get an alpine start, which means whatever I eat needs to um, get digested pretty quickly because within an hour, I'm gonna be throwing on a pack and I'm gonna be hiking in and going uphill, um, you know, at a, at a, as a, a pretty, you know, fast clip in order to get to the base of the route. And then I'll refuel again there before I actually start climbing. So if I have a protein smoothie that is chock full of, you know, uh, um, protein powder and, uh, you know, some berries that are, because they're high in fiber, they have a lot of antioxidants in there, um, and it gives you some really nice, good, clean, quick energy, um, and maybe a little bit of avocado in there as well. I'll start out with that smoothie, and then after that, that smoothie, get to the trailhead, get ready to go, hike in. And once I'm, I hike in and I'm at the base, you know, and I'm going through my pack and swapping out my climbing shoes, put my harness on, get the rope flaked out. At that point, I would eat a couple of little uh, frittata bites that I would have made the night before. And the frittata bites might have things like, you know, up the protein, you have the egg in there. Maybe we'll have a little bacon in there. There'll be some uh, cheese in there and some coconut oil with the, with the MCT oils in there to increase the, the fat in there and try and make it as calorie dense as I possibly can. So I'll eat a couple of those while I'm preparing, getting ready for the route. And then once I get done um, getting to the top of, you know, whatever peak I'm on, do a little refuel again. At that point, maybe I have some macadamia nuts and, you know, some, some dried fruits or something, you know, in my pocket or a homemade trail bar. Um, you know, that has some good nuts and seeds and, and just some energy to kind of give back. At that point, maybe some, some quick energy would be helpful, like having a, a date or, you know, the dried fruit or something. If I have depleted the glycogen in my muscles, if I have um, quick carbohydrates, you know, quick energy, that'll help replenish uh, the glycogen in my muscles. And then also it'll help with that cognitive function, kind of perk me up a little bit. So I'm paying attention and very mindful when I'm doing all of the repels and the descent from my route before either I'm hiking out or I'm, you know, going to the next peak to, to go climb that. Um, so those are just some examples of ways to fuel and different types of fuels uh, different types of foods to fuel with to kind of like just keep your energy going all day long. And another note on that is um, don't wait until you get hungry when you're in these environments. If you wait until you're hungry, it's too, it, it, it's already too late. I mean, still eat, but it's already too late. You, you've already lost your energy if you've gotten to that, that point where you're, you're starting to feel hungry. Um, and if you have those 
those healthy fats and if you have the protein and complex carbs, it keeps you from feeling hungry all of the time. If you're constantly just burning off of you know, sugary foods or refined foods, then it keeps you in that state of constantly feeling hungry and constantly feeling like you need to fuel, which can be really distracting and take more energy out of your body to, to keep up. And you want your energy slow, sustain, so you can just keep going and going and going. You don't want to be going up and down, up and down, up and down with your energy levels because it's just a lot, um, it's a lot of extra added pressure to put on your body when you're already asking a lot of it. Um, okay, so that's a little bit about uh, endurance foods. The fourth one that we're gonna go over that we talked about, building muscle mass and reaching your desired body composition. Um, ways in which that you can, uh, foods in, that you can eat to um, increase your, uh, your, your muscle mass are lean proteins, eggs are great for that, um, whole fat yogurt, protein powders. Uh, the one thing that you wanna be considerate of when you're looking at protein powders is you want to try and find protein powders that are meant to have the highest increase of bioavailability. Unfortunately, a lot of protein powders, it can say, you know, 25 grams of protein, you know, or, or 30 grams of protein, but that doesn't mean that that's the protein that your body is actually going to take in. That doesn't mean that it's all you know, bioavailable to you. So you wanna take a look at some of those ratios and those brands that will make sure that that happens. Um, whey protein, grass-fed whey protein is something that is easily digestible for your body. If you are uh, vegan, there are some really great protein mixtures out there where there's pea protein and there's hemp protein, um, and they're, you know, it's, it's all mixed together and, and, you know, different types of vegan proteins all mixed together that create a really nice balance to make sure it's, um, bioavailable to you. Uh, another thing that would be really great is looking to see if they have essential amino acids or even if they just have, you know, BCAAs, but just so you're getting some of those, um, amino acids, because that's, what's going to really help build up your muscles. And, um, Let's see, uh, cottage cheese, beans, quinoa, tofu, all of these things are also really great to help uh, build your muscle mass. And kind of a general rule of thumb as far as how much protein you should be taking in, kind of general rule, rules of thumbs would be, you know, 100 grams of protein a day is a good one to go by or, you know, a, a gram of protein for every pound, especially if you're, you're moving your body a lot. So whatever your body weight is, um, trying to take in a, a gram per pound of, a gram of protein per pound of body weight. That's another, you know, general rule of thumb as far as what's going to, um, the amount of protein that you need to really build on the protein, especially if you're working out, you're doing a lot of lifting, you're being really active. You have spent so much time trying to build that muscle and build that strength. And if you're putting that time into it while you're exercising and in your movement practice, you want to retain it as much as you can. And one of the best ways to retain it is to make sure that you're actually eating protein because if you don't have enough protein in your body, what happens is a lot of times the protein will, um, it'll just start cannibalizing itself. So your muscles, they're looking for protein so it can keep building. There's no protein for it, so it'll just start cannibalizing the muscles that you do have in order to do it. And a lot of times that's how we can get these overuse injuries. Um, so keeping a, keeping a good eye on that. So the fifth one that I wanna cover is, um, recovering faster and boosting your immune system and lowering the inflammation in your body. So all of this is based towards recovery. It's the rest and restore part of your um, exercise regime, whatever it is. Even, you know, even if you're out doing your um, event, what is it that you can do at the end of the day to help recover? Because that's when um, all the muscle growth is going to happen. Any kind of broken, damaged cells in your body, it's that recover and rest time that is going to get those cells built back up and cleaned up and, and get your body back on track and ready to go for the next day. Whether the next day is you're going to go out and move your body again or whether the next day is, you know, 
it's Monday morning, you got to go back to work and you need to feel charged up and, and ready to go. Whatever it is that we're doing, we always need to make sure that we have that really nice balance between really challenging ourselves and creating that stress within the body and then having that time to really kind of restore and, and rest from um, whatever that challenge is at so we can receive the benefits from it. Because if we're always pushing, pushing, pushing and charging ahead, you just kind of, the, the tank is just gonna slowly go down, go down, go down until, until the tank's emptied out. So we wanna always do what we can to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that'll happen during our recovery times. During our recovery times, um, you know, different things that you want to eat um, are your, you know, proteins that we talked about. That'll be really helpful to recover um, and build muscle tissue. And then we also want to work on our um, anti-inflammatory um, markers, and we want to make sure that we're eating foods to lower the inflammation in our body. A lot of times, like inflammation is good for our body, right? So inflammation is a signal that our body um, sends to an area that needs some healing. So that will, the inflammation will help heal. But if you have constant inflammation in your body and, you know, it, 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 it's, you know, persistent, then we need to get rid of that inflammation because a lot of times that's what's causing like our, the joints in our hands and our knees, just all of the joints in our bodies get really sticky and we wanna keep the inflammation in there down so they have, they're gliding properly and we have proper range of motion um, when, we're, when we're in movement. So uh, different foods that can help out with um, uh, your anti-inflammatory markers would be things like fish. You know, shellfish, uh, you know, having some like real fatty, small fish, anything that's really high in omega-3 fatty acids, ginger is really good for us, turmeric, warm spices are really good for us, anything that spices, you know, peppers, cayenne, paprika, um, you know, having golden milk, you know, golden milk's made with, you know, cinnamon and turmeric and ginger, um, and that's really good for your body. Dark leafy greens, dark leafy greens are really good to decrease the inflammation in your body. Olive oil, tomatoes, um, berries are really good for us. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll just take fresh ginger, take some big hunks of it, and, you know, fill up a pot with water, add those ginger chunks, maybe put like a little bit of stevia or just a little touch of honey, a little bit of paprika or cayenne, some lemon juice, and just bring it up until it goes to boil. As soon as it boils, shut it off, cool it down, put it in a, a water pitcher, and then I'll just take that water pitcher and I'll leave it in my fridge. And then whenever I feel like having a glass of something, like um, at the end of the day with work, you know, maybe that's what I'll have. I'll have a little bit of that ginger water, just something to kind of, you know, punctuate. I'm done with work and now I'm in my relaxation mode instead of having um, an alcoholic beverage that um, is going to deplete my body, uh, inflame my body and not feel as good in the morning. This is something that I can have that's gonna feel like a treat. You know, maybe I can put a little bit of vinegar in there or a little bit of shrub or, or you know, or make it effervescent with, by adding a little LaCroix or um, you know, some sort of seltzer water in there or something like that to, to bring up the, the effervescence in it. But having these anti-inflammatory foods is really, you'll, you'll really start to notice it um, in your joints and, and, and you'll just be moving a lot more fluidly. And if you have any injuries, it'll also really help um, heal and recover from your, your injuries faster. Um, I am... I'm getting over some plantar fasciitis right now, and a couple of things that I noticed that really helped with it was really just focusing on having those in anti-inflammatory foods and the foods that create inflammation, just staying away from them. So I'm staying away from processed foods, staying away from, um, you know, processed sugars, uh, and you know all that sort of stuff really helped decrease the inflammation in my foot because it had become chronic. Like the initial healing, and when the inflammation, you know, got to the plantar fasciitis to start healing it, it had done its job, and, and then at that point it just remained chronic. So um, really, just cleaning up my diet really helped a lot with 
you know, or, you know, shoulder pain or anything like that. It can really help clear out that information really quickly and get you back in the mountains moving properly again. Um, okay, so other foods that are good for your rest and digest and restore is probiotic foods. So really focusing on our gut health um, and having a healthy microbiome. Um, those are things that's going to help increase our immune system and help stabilize our mood, which will help us make better food choices. 90% of our serotonin lives in our gut. So if we can focus on um, having a good, healthy microbiome, then that is what is, is going to help boost our immune system and keep us from getting those, those little tiny colds. And you know how your body just starts to feel run down a little bit? A lot of times it's just feeling run down from stress or lack of sleep or, you know, you're, we're just pushing our bodies really hard. So um, having those probiotic foods will really help give us that lift and help with uh, um, our, our uh, gut biome. So things like pickled vegetables, kimchi, sauerkraut, yogurt, kombucha, all of these sorts of things are going to be really great for your immune system. Um, and another thing when it comes to, uh, rest, restore some, um, you know, some things to think about when we create our training schedules, like for me, if I'm getting ready to go climb a big wall in Yosemite Valley, or if I'm getting ready to go for like, a you know, a three week, you know, sport climbing trip overseas or something like that, I want to be performing at my best. I spent a lot of money on that plane ticket. I spent a lot of time, you know, planning out the trip. Um, and I'm, I'm super psyched on it at this point. You know, I have a cool training schedule. I've been, I've been working on my, my little workout schedule every day to get tuned up, to go out there and, and have the best time possible. And, um, when you do that, you need to make sure that in, within that training schedule that you have your rest days set aside in there. And if you are working at a, a vigorous training schedule, you want to make sure that if you're not feeling good one day, but that's your day to do your, you know, um, high intensity training, but your body just isn't feeling it, then make sure that you honor that and just take that, make it more of a, a restful activity. Like if you've blocked out 45 minutes to do that training, that high intensity training, maybe just switch it up. And instead of it being a high intensity training where you're moving really quickly from, you know, station to station and muscle group to muscle group, maybe, uh, try and make it a little bit more of a restorative practice. So instead of, um, you know, doing, you know, really heavy curls or, or really heavy deadlifts, maybe instead just focus on doing blood flow. Um, you know, you could do the same thing, just lower weights, maybe the same reps, but lower weights, or maybe even more reps with less weight to it. But it, it is good to keep that, to keep yourself on schedule, to like keep your 45 minute block, but you know, maybe do some other things. Or if you feel something that's really tweaky, maybe it's a PT session that day. And that's what, that's what you focus on. Um, but that will really help you from overtraining and depleting. Um, and another thing that can really help with overtraining and, and depleting your muscles is um, using some sort of um, HRV system, so a heart rate variability system. You can find an app on your phone where you know you use your your fingerprint and it'll you know actually go through and it'll track and let you know where your um, where your heart rate is at. And then the, there might be a little journal component to it to say how do you feel this morning? You know when you wake up, you always do it at the same time every day, so you get really consistent information. But it's a way to stay really mindful as to where your body is at. I mean before I had. Um, come across using a, a heart, you know, rate variability system of some sort, whether it's on a watch, whether it's an app, you know, I would just be so dedicated to my workout schedule. I just keep going and going and going. So um, whether I was hurt or not, and I always thought like, just push through the pain, push through the pain. Well, um, I think it's just as important to honor your body and understanding if you are pushing your your physical capability, making sure that it's not tweaky and knowing when something feels tweaky or when something is just muscle building. Um, all right, so 
that is a little bit, uh, th those are some more tactics on what you can do for rest, recover, along with the foods that we had talked about. Another thing for rest and recover is, you know, get that couple hours before um, you go to bed, making sure that you're not eating um, too much food then. So uh, that way your body can stay in that, that restorative state. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, so the sixth one, keeping the body and mind hydrated. Um, and if, if, if you can do that, what it's going to do is it's going to um, regulate your body temperature and uh, keep your joints lubricated, uh, prevent infections, deliver nutrition into your cells, keep your organs uh, functioning the way that they should be. Um, it'll also improve your mood. It'll improve your quality of sleep. It'll improve, you know, cognition, um, all of these things. So really making sure that we stay hydrated. And that means that like ballpark wise, we want to stay, you know, we want to make sure that we're having at least eight glasses of water a day. Um, and those would be eight ounce glasses. So kind of an eight by eight method every day. That's um, something that we want to keep track of different ways. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't like having just plain water and that's okay. You can squeeze a little lemon juice in there, some lime juice, make yourself a shrub, put some herbs in there. Um, anything to, to make it fun. Electrolytes, you definitely want to make sure that um, you get good electrolytes in your body. You need the potassium, you need the, you know, magnesium, you need, um, you need all those salts. Um, all of those things will, will keep your, your body running, especially if you're in hot temperatures or if you are fasting in any way um, uh, or if you're sweating a lot. That's, that's times when you are drinking liquid that you want to make sure that you're getting electrolytes along with your water so you're replenishing all of those really, really important uh, minerals that will, that will keep you moving. Um, if you have a, a water bottle of some sort, that's a great way to keep track, you know, a liter or a couple liter water bottle and you just know that you need to fill this up X amount of times, oh, you know, at your workstation, have it there ready for you. If you're moving your body, trying to find a way to make water drinking as um, convenient for yourself as possible. So if I'm, if I'm hiking in, a, a water bladder in my pack so it's just right here and really easy for me to get to and take little sits whenever I need it is is a good way to go same thing with waiting until you're hungry you don't want to wait until you're thirsty if you waited until you're thirsty you're already on your road to being dehydrated so you just want to make sure that you're you're keeping up with your water intake it's really hard when you're out there moving in, in the mountains when you're moving your body really hard you're not always really thirsty but you need to drink even when you aren't thirsty um, in order to keep from, you know, crashing and also in order to keep like really good cognitive function. A lot of times when we're doing these mountain sports, they truly are life and death sports and uh, anything that we can do to stay safe out there and to keep our reaction time up is really important. So hydration, 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 electrolytes, electrolytes, electrolytes. In fact, when I wake up in the morning, I wake up in the morning with a glass uh, full of electrolytes because I've been resting all that time. I haven't had water for, you know, eight hours, nine hours, you know, whenever my last drink of water was. So I know that my body's a little bit dehydrated already. Um, and also I'll um, do a lot of um, intermittent fasting. And when you're doing intermittent fasting or if you're practicing low carb, if you're paleo, keto, carnivore, you know, carb cycling, any of those, um, carbohydrates contain a lot of water. And so when you're depleting your body of the carbohydrates, you're also completing your body of uh, the water. So you actually need to increase the amount of water that you have if you are um, practicing some sort of low carb diet. And that's very often when you feel that fatigue, if you're on a low carb diet, you know, keto flu, a lot of times it's because um, we're not staying on top of our electrolytes. Um, and so now that kind of uh, puts us into performance diets and just a little bit about different performance diets. So these performance diets, um, they have a lot of benefits and they really can improve your performance, um, but they can also 
be damaging as well. So you really want to just make sure you do a little bit of homework before you do these diets. Listen to your body cues, see how you're, how you're feeling with it um, and seeing if it's working for you. And you know what? Some days it's gonna work for you and other days it isn't. It really depends. It depends on where your stress level is. Is your cortisol level you know, really high because um, you're already experiencing a lot of stress in your body, a lot of anxiety through work or family or, or you know, something outside of um, you know, exercising or, or your workout routine or, or if you're pushing it too hard. If you have a bunch of stressors on your body already, if you start one of these performance diets, it does cause more stress. Stress isn't always a bad thing, but if you have too much stress going on, you get trigger stacked and then it does become a negative. So we wanna keep it in the positive stress. But a lot of these um, different types of diets would be like paleo, keto, vegan, um, intermittent fasting, carb cycling, um, carnivore. These are really popular diets that are meant to increase your performance. Uh, they're also meant to help with your body composition. Um, and they're also meant to help with your, your cognitive function, maybe to help get rid of allergies. Uh, a lot of them are a part of a, an elimination diet. Um, so they're all really wonderful, but you really need to kind of do some research and think about how it's interacting with your body and, and, and listen to your body and see what's best for you. Just because someone says, oh, I love keto, it's so great for me, doesn't mean it's gonna be the best thing for your body. So just something to pay attention to. And our physiology is constantly changing. So, you know, a, a, I have been keto for a month and then I noticed a slow decline because my body just really needed the carbs. And so I needed to carb cycle and be keto for a while and then have a day or two a week where I incorporated more carbs and then kind of created my own rhythm. And it's gonna be different for everyone because our physiology is, is all different. So, um, you know, that you will be the one to really understand what's best for you. All right. Um, so some, some non-nutrition based uh, self-care practices that's going to really help with your your performance since we're, we're talking about all sorts of performances that good quality sleep having a good movement practice you know five days a week even if it's 20 hours of, of cardio or I'm sorry 20 minutes a day of cardio anything that you can do even if it's like you have five minutes and you're just going to do you know running sprints for uh, five minutes in place or take these like little micro exercise breaks a lot of times for me if I exercise my dog in the morning, that means I'm not gonna have time to exercise myself. So if I'm fetching Hank, I'll throw the ball as far as I can for him. And as he's running, I will just sit in place, do as many like air squats as I can. Have my knees, touch my elbows, go up and down as fast as I can. As soon as he brings me that ball back, I'll huck it again, you know, and do the same thing. Or I'll do little five minute, you know, Mercedes Palmeyer, my co-author of Peak Nutrition, she came up with um, just a bunch of different types of movement practices that we can do in a, in a five minute time period or a two minute time period. Or, you know, if all you have is, is 10 minutes a day, there's ways to like really get your heart rate up and get some um, strength training in even just a small amount of time. So if you don't have 45 minutes and that feels overwhelming, then don't worry about it. Just do as many push-ups as you can, like in between your calls, or do push-ups to failure in between calls, or you know squats, or or you know um, some yoga poses, or or wherever you can fit it in there. Just keep moving all day long. You know, I think a lot of times we think, okay, well, if we're exercising 45 minutes a day, two hours a day, then that's great. But it is possible to be a really fit couch potato where you get your exercise in the morning and then you're just riding the laptop all day long and then you eat a big dinner and then you go to bed. Um, you wanna make sure that you're getting some sort of movement practice in there um, throughout the day. So if you can be walking while you're on your call, if you can be at a standing desk or whatever it is that you can do to kind of keep your um, movement practice throughout the day. Also having a positive mindset, uh, maybe a gratitude practice, that's another way to really help your performance and keep those, keep the rumination wheel from going where you're like, oh man, I'm never gonna, 
18 more miles to go. Oh, I got to hike for three more days. I got these blisters. Oh, I got cramping in my hands. How am I going to get to the top of this pitch? Um, you know, try and think positively like, okay, all I need to think about is placing the next piece of protection until I get to the anchor. That's all I need to think about. Or on the hike, all I need to think about is just one foot in front of the other. That's all. Just try and keep yourself in the present moment and a positive mindset, and that will really help improve our, our performance. As well as any meditation or breath work, that's another thing that can be really helpful. As well as doing any reading, um, you know, or listen to podcasts or, um, you know, anything that you can get your hands on to uh, figure out how to perform your best when you're in the outdoors. There's a lot of great information out there. Um, okay, I'm running out of time here. Um, if you have any questions for me, uh, please DM me on my Instagram. It's at Chef Maria Hines. If you have questions about foods, performance diets, any of that sort of, sort of stuff, resources, let me know. Um, I have typed up a bunch of notes here as well from uh, our talk today, and I will make sure to get all of the notes posted in my bio on my Instagram as well. And REI will be saving this uh, live feed um, on their Instagram, so you will always have access to it. Thank you for joining us. I hope to do many of these, so please let me know what you're interested in when it comes to wellness, outdoor performance, health, you know, cooking outside, and um, anything that has to do with nutrition, outside, cooking, um, and movement. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.